All right, next up is uh, House Bill 393. Representative Kidwell is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Uh, House Bill 393 requires that if a manufacturer, and I say if, a manufacturer of home appliances has a warranty on the appliance, if the appliance breaks, they must fix it or replace it. If that warranty states that they will fix or replace, that they must do that within 45 days. So you can see it's a very short bill, very simple. I'll stand for any questions, Mr. Chairman. Any questions of the bill sponsor? Give me one second. Okay, Representative Bradford, I saw you first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I have Electrolux back in Charlotte, and so they they do not support the bill. The chamber uh, or the Charlotte Regional um, Business Authority they are against it as well. Um, you know, I I understand it's a short bill, it's a simple bill. I, so I have, I guess, a question: like, if I mean these these appliances are getting um, more and more technically advanced. Um, and having at one point in my lifetime owning a property management company where we managed thousands of rental properties with appliances, disposals, I know disposal is not an appliance under this, but in many cases it's user error, frankly. They don't know how to properly operate an appliance just because these things have all kinds of buttons and switches and safety devices, et cetera. So my question is, under this bill, if someone makes a, a warranty claim and they insist that there's a problem and under this bill the manufacturer is required to, to assess it and then they find out that in fact it's been user error and they've had to jump through all these hoops does the manufacturer have the ability to recoup any of their cost of sending reps out there et cetera? i'm just curious about that is that a question to the sponsor yeah i'm sorry I'm, that should have been a question um is how would that be handled in the event that a, repeat, a warranty claim really um, resulted in being user error, uh, and innocently for sure, uh, but that's really what it is. How does a manufacturer, you know, cut I me mean, with labor costs and running technicians around? Those are not cheap items to do. Ha again, having a property management company at one point and having to send techs out to places only to have to hit a button under disposal or reset a GFI switch on an electrical plate, again, knowing that those are not appliances per se. But how, how would that be remedied for a manufacturer in that instance? Representative Kidwell is recognized. Thank you for that question, Representative Bradford. First, to address your <coughs> concerns from Electrolux and the Chamber, I've spoken with both of them in my office. Um, Electrolux, I had indicated to them if they had some concerns that they wanted to see addressed in the bill, this was two weeks ago, Representative Bradford, that they should send those to me. I've not heard anything from them. I, I would assume that meant that they became okay with the bill as it was rewritten. Uh, spoke with the chamber this morning in my office, and the chamber, uh, when they left the office, said, well, we, we understand what you're saying, and we really can't rebut the bill, okay? So in, in your question, uh, you know, if it's a GFI problem, something like that, well, I don't think that's going to be a situation where you know your refrigerator stopped working because of a GFI. First, refrigerators wouldn't be on a GFI. Uh, you know, we're talking about refrigerators, washers, dryers, things of that nature. Typically, not on ground fault. Uh, secondly, I think that the average citizen is going to understand how to work it. Third, if they send a technician out from the the uh, whoever it is that repairs, which is typically not the factory, usually it's it's going to be from the retailer. They have their own service people. They're going to look at it and say, "Hey, you didn't push this button." I think that's going to solve that with the first trip. We're not talking about that. We're talking about an appliance that fails to perform. It's called merchantability, meaning it cannot perform the specific uh, thing that it was designed to do. And that if the manufacturer cannot fix or replace that appliance, or cannot fix it within 45 days, that they would have to replace the appliance if their warranty says they have a fix or replace warranty. This does not require them to have a fix or replace warranty. It, in fact, doesn't even require them to have a warranty. It just says that if their warranty says fix or replace, if they can't fix it, they have to replace it. Now, I would venture to, and this is a question I put to Commerce and Electrolux, you're selling appliances out here today, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're paying hundreds to thousands of dollars for pieces of equipment that will fail. Under most manufacturers' warranties, it's usually a year. 
I would venture to ask anybody in here, if you paid two or three thousand dollars for a refrigerator and it stopped working, and they told you six, eight, ten, twelve weeks to get the parts and fix or replace that appliance, do you feel like you've been properly serviced? Do you feel like they've held up to the spirit of that fix or replace warranty that you were told when you bought it? I think the answer to that is no. Mr. Chairman, follow up. Uh, uh, yes, you have to follow up. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Representative Kidwell. Um, and, and to your point about Electrolux and the uh, Sharp Regional Business Authority, um, I would agree that if they have not come back with their concerns, um, then that's understandable from your perspective. I just, last time I t talked to them, they had issues, and so I'm bringing it up um, just to have this dialogue. So um, I would imagine even after this committee, if there are concerns, they, they, they know how to come back and express those. Uh, but back to my original question, and I was using a GFI as an example, you know, I, I'm just, it sounds like that there really is no provision that if in fact there truly is a user error of an appliance and it really isn't a warranty issue and they have to send someone out to show them how to correctly use it, there really is no remedy for the manufacturer to recoup any of those costs. That, that's what it sounds like. Okay. Thank you for that question. And again, let's, let's go back to when people buy the appliance. Uh, number one, it's going to come with an instruction book. Number two, you got YouTube videos on virtually everything today. Uh, number three, if it ever does rise to the point, as it probably does today, the manufacturer would send out a technician or the retailer would send out a technician. That's what they do today. And they would say, well, sir, you're misusing this appliance. You should do X or Y. I don't think that's going to be an ongoing thing where each week you're going to have to go back and show them which button to push. Okay? I, I think you're, you're overexpanding where that would be. What this is addressing is specifically failures in appliances to perform within their designed uh, product usability and to do that to the point that the manufacturer is not getting the parts or showing the ability or desire to fix that product and bring it back into compliance with what it was designed for. Okay, L last time, Mr. Chairman. You, now, l comment? You promise? I promise, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, thank you for that. I um, Just having experience with dealing with multiple calls from folks about how to use things and having to send people repeatedly someone's got to pay those bills and so while I'm not suggesting that this bill is is good or bad for that matter I just think that's something to think about and while I'm not going to try to resolve it today that is an issue because this bill does make very specific things that these manufacturers have to do and I, I hear you about reading manuals I don't know the last time any of you picked up a manual and read anything is but they're often thick then there's YouTube videos not everybody believe it or not you know uses those things even though that may sound foreign that is true especially seniors etc and, and uh, some vulnerable people so um, maybe this is something we can talk about I'll, I'll talk to other stakeholders but I at least wanted to go on the record that I'm curious about how that would be addressed and it sounds like right now it really doesn't and maybe it's not a huge issue but I at least wanted to talk about it because that's what we're supposed to do here in these meetings thank you all right the chair had us uh one, two, three, four, five more signed up already. So just know that we have to leave here at uh, 10 till when there's a rules committee meeting, I believe it is, correct? So anyway, we'll do what we can until we run out of time. All right, Representative Cunningham, thank, thank you for you. your patience. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question for staff, um, if they are ready. Staff's recognized. Thank you. So warranty coverage is already regulated at the state and the federal level. State uniform commercial code laws cover breach of warranties. Is that not correct? Mr. Chair? Hi, uh, Bill Patterson for staff. Uh, Representative Cunningham, there are provisions in the uniform commercial code that deal with uh, both express and implied warranties. None of them uh, have any requirements with regard to how long a manufacturer has to fix or replace the product. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. So um, my question to the bill sponsor, Representative Kidwell, so if this piece of legislation passes, what will we do for the companies that have already issued voluntary warranties, um, you know, for appliances and those types of things? Are we going to have to go back and grandfather? What are we going to have to do for those companies that already have warranties out there that were pre-existing? And thank you for that question, Representative. Uh, actually, it does say in the bill that it would only be for appliances sold on or after the date of the effectiveness of the law. Follow up, Mr. Chair, for my comments. You're recognized. Thank you so much. I want to just tell a little story. 
and the story is about me coming down I-77 and hitting the cones in the road. And when I hit the cones in the road, they totally lost my car, and it was a Lexus, and I had had it since 2014. So I totally lost that car, and I sent the information in to the insurance company. And they said, Rep, we can't fix your car. It's total, right? So I had to go purchase a brand new car. So I didn't get what I paid for that car, the original amount. I had to put another $20,000 to get that car. Because of the COVID pandemic, which we don't know what's going to happen in the future, replacement parts for washing machines, refrigerators, cars, the little chips, delayed. Delayed, not on purpose, but just because we had the incidents of a pandemic to take place. I wish somebody could have pulled up in my driveway and said, I got the parts for your car but that didn't happen. And I don't think that we're gonna see that happening. And I'm hoping, and I'm hoping that we don't have to see that happen again. But I do think that the 45 days is a little bit much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Representative Shepard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a couple of questions. Um, first of all, if I was to go to Walmart and buy an Electrolux and buy it there, normally I would take it back to Walmart. Does this apply to those type of appliances? or is it something where you have to send back to the manufacturer? Because normally those companies will stand behind that product and they will send it back. And then I got another follow-up question after that. Um, and thank you for that question, uh, Representative Shepard. So no, this would not apply to that. Walmart, when they make a choice to do that return policy, actually on most products that you look at, you're gonna find it says on it very clearly, do not bring this back to the place of purchase. Okay, so that, that, that's something that Walmart chooses to do for their customer satisfaction. This specifically deals with manufacturer. Uh, follow up. Um, other question, I know there's Electrolux in Kinston. Have you reached out to them? I'm sure you probably have, but just wanted to ask you that. So they had a representative from Electrolux come to my office. I don't know if he was from Kinston or, or somewhere else in the state. Uh, we did speak about the Kinston uh, reference and Electrolux actually assured me that they don't have these types of problems with their appliances. I said, well, then you, you should not have a concern about the bill then. Uh, Representative Winslow. Uh, just a similar um, comment or question uh, with Representative Cunningham. What, what happens if parts aren't available for that equipment? They're, they're making all efforts to make the repair, but they can't give it in 45 days. I've actually experienced some of that myself. Um, so what happens if they can't get it within the 45 days? So Representative Winslow, I would, I would come back to you with the question, what are you supposed to do as a consumer that just paid several thousand dollars for an appliance and through no fault of your own, it no longer functions within its design capabilities. Let's take a refrigerator that won't refrigerate. Not only will your food go bad, potentially medicine that your family may need to keep themselves alive, things like insulin, antibiotics, it must be refrigerated at home. Now you're going to have to go out and buy a new appliance because there was a failure in the design or process of said appliance. Do you think it's fair to put that on the consumer? when an appliance fails. We're talking about an appliance that fails within the warranty period of one year or less, okay? I think it's unfair to ask the consumer to have to replace that product. And, and with that, Mr. Uh, Chairman, if I might, I'd like Representative Ward to, to offer uh, some testimony here, if you don't mind. Oh, you got three minutes. You got three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When Representative Kidwell drafted this bill, I Pro, uh, contacted him, asked me to put on his primary sponsor because this has affected my family unit in the very recent past. Uh, my granddaughter purchased a refrigerator. I won't tell you the band name. Uh, she got it home. It lasted two hours. She had that refrigerator. She had contract technicians to her residence six times in four months. They would fix it. It would last two hours. To this day, she has not had that refri re re refrigerator properly prepared or replaced, even after multiple contacts with the, comp the company uh, under the, with the war warranty is carried. She actually had to go out and buy another refrigerator. Uh, during that period of four months, they incurred uh, quite a bit of expense of having to run back and forth to the store on every day to make food purchases to put in a cooler that they had to purchase ice to keep the food uh, fresh so that they could consume it. So 
this is actually a, a, an issue that needs to be rectified, and I think we have the authority here to rectify that through this bill, and I would highly recommend that we uh, give this a favorable consideration. Thank you. Representative Sainz is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have some concerns with the bill, too, and, and um, knowing what different states do, I, I, from my research and what I've been able to find out, it, California is the only other state that has a similar state law with uh, warranties and lemon laws like this. Um, the California law passed over 50 years ago in 1970, and other states have enacted laws on this subject. There's the Federal Magnuson Moss Act, which was passed in 75, which provides a uniform, consistent law regulating warranties for manufacturers and retailers across the entire country. So in other words, California passed its lemon law in 1970, and then the federal government passed the Magnuson Miss Act uh, covering the entire, Ma Magnuson Moss Act, excuse me, covering the entire country in 1975, and the other 49, other 49 states have decided to use the federal law instead of a state-specific law. And if I understand the bill right, as drafted, it applies to not just appliances, but almost every consumer goods sold with a warranty in North Carolina because it utilizes the definition from the laws regulating service contracts. So we could be in a situation where manufacturers uh, do not offer warranties in North Carolina or where prices on items covered by this bill increase for consumers to cover the compliance costs, which I don't think is what you intend to do, but could be the unintended consequences of, of passing a bill like this. So I, I have a lot of concerns with, with, with what you want to accomplish with the bill. I'm not, again, I'm, I'm not sure that it does what you, what you want it to do, but I, but I do think it makes it more confusing and may even put consumers in some jeopardy in North Carolina uh, by, by forcing manufacturers not even to offer the warranty. So then it's kind of a buyer beware and good luck. So I, 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 again, I understand that if you buy something that doesn't work and, and it makes you mad and, and, you, and you want to rectify that, I got it. But I'm not sure this gets to that. And I, I think it actually has a, a, a much deeper impact on, on, on the industries and the, and the folks that provide these products. All righty. Uh, without objection, the PCS is before us and favorable to the PCS for House Bill 393, unfavorable to the regional Mr. Bill. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I may ask staff to address this, because we actually did address uh, Representative Sain's question in, in my research on the bill, and it is simply that it falls under that paragraph in law. That, that's, that section of the law does not apply and mean that extended service warranties and such. So if I can ask staff to address that. Sure. Staff's recognized. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, I don't know that I understand exactly what the question was. Uh, you, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so the question was is that be, because this falls under the service policy section of North Carolina law, that this law would not actually supersede that law. It would simply be a law that stands by itself. Is that not correct in what we talked about? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Kidwell, um, this bill uses the definition of consumer uh, uh, of appliance that's in that portion of the general statutes. Okay, but aside from that, it doesn't really have any interaction with any of the other provisions of that article. So it's using the definition of uh, home appliance that's in GS 66-371, but that's the only reference, that's the only interaction between this bill and that article. It's, that's the only use it makes of that article. And Representative Sain, I believe that answers your question. Uh, Mr. Chairman, for me. Yes, you're recognized. I'm, I'm not sure that it does, and, and, and while I appreciate what you're trying to get at, um, I, the, the bigger summation really is I think it really does put uh, future warranties at risk because I, I don't know what incentive, um, if it's just simply a return it because you, you know, you've got this law in place and, and I think some consumers, I've had, I was in a retail business at one time myself and would have people who decided that they had spent too much money that week and, and try to return something uh, using a warranty that um, they just wanted their money back. Um, I, I, I see where we could get into a place where, you know, manufacturers then just don't offer the warranties. And I don't, I don't think that puts our consumers at, at a good place. So I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not supportive of the bill. I'm, I'm going to vote against it. I, 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 I can appreciate when someone gets a, a, a lemon that I got it. But I, but I don't know this solves your problem. 
Representative Singh, will you make a motion on the bill, please, so we can get the people to the rules? Uh, well, my motion would be for an unfavorable, sir. Uh, comments? M Mr. Chairman, I'm going to withdraw the bill and speak with Representative Sain and, and bring it back to committee. Thank you. Uh, all right, the uh, committee is adjourned. Thank you for your attendance. We can't hear. We can't hear.